Hi, welcome to Data Engineering. So uh, the agenda of the today's session, right? So what are all the topics I'm going to cover? Uh, MapReduce introduction and then MapReduce daemon and its architecture and then MapReduce program flow. So how the program, so before showing you the code, I'm going to show you how the program flow happens for uh, the given logic. Okay, and then MapReduce input and output formats and then MapReduce data types and then MapReduce code walkthrough. So we have a sales uh, analytics. So I'm going to show you with small amount of data. So first I'll give you the walkthrough of the code about mapper class, reducer class and what are all the things are we are doing, how the logic has been implemented and everything. And then uh, MapReduce yawn architecture and then MapReduce version 1 to version 2. Like we have uh, till Hadoop 1 we have one version of architecture. After Hadoop to from Hadoop 2 we have a different version of architecture, right? So till Hadoop 1 we have job tracker and task tracker as demons for Hadoop uh, MapReduce. But from Hadoop 2 onwards, the version 2 onwards, we have resource manager and node manager. So some architecture change has been happened. So we'll be discussing that. And then MapReduce projects set up in IDE. I'm going to do a project set up in Eclipse IDE, how to build a project for MapReduce and how to do all the dependency setup and all. And then how to convert your MapReduce program to a jar file. And then moving the jar file to the Linux cluster and then executing the jar file, the MapReduce jar. And finally, input splits, which is very important concept in MapReduce, even in Spark as well. And then finally, speculative execution. So speculative execution is very important. Uh, and we have that concept in MapReduce as well and Spark as well. It's, it's like a theory concept, mostly like you need to know what exactly it is. So this is what the agenda. Okay, let's get into the topic. Today, we are going to discuss about MapReduce. So MapReduce is, is an important concept in Hadoop. And I will tell you the priority and the need, uh, current use in the industry and everything. So this video, it's complete MapReduce video that I'm going to cover the entire MapReduce stuff. Fine. So Hadoop consists of two projects, right? So one is HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System, and then the another one is MapReduce. So if you haven't uh, done with HDFS, uh, the video is already uploaded. So in the description box, I have given the playlist link where you can find all the big data videos and you can also find HDFS video as well. So before coming to MapReduce, for sure, you are supposed to know what is HDFS. That is very important. Okay. So with respect to MapReduce, so it's a, it's a massive parallel processing framework, which we call it in short form as MPP, Massive Parallel Process Technology. So this MapReduce is from the paper GMR Google MapReduce, which was invented in the year of 2004. So the combination of GFS and GMR, they invented Hadoop. GFS invented in 2002, which is Google file system, which is a distributed file system and Google MapReduce. So in Hadoop also, we have the same GFS to HDFS, GMR to MapReduce. So Google file system, or I can say HDFS, HDFS is a distributed file system where you first distribute the data and then you do a distributed parallel processing. So without distributing the data, it is very hard for us to do distributed parallel processing. Okay, so first you distribute the data. So for that we need HDFS and then we go for MapReduce and then we do the distributed parallel processing. So you can ask a next question. So what is the need of knowing MapReduce at this point of time? It's it's by it's the, the year I'm recording. This is 2022. But many of you have this question. So why should I have to know MapReduce? Because people used to say MapReduce is gone. MapReduce is dead. So why still I have to know it? See, MapReduce is kind of an uh, a parallel processing framework which act as an ancestor for Spark. Okay, so you need to know the core concept of MapReduce, which will help you to understand Spark. And secondly, which will help you to uh, give some answers in interviews. And still now in interviews, people are asking questions from MapReduce. And for sure, I'm telling you, you will not get any work in your real time in MapReduce. Okay, so the MapReduce is compulsory to know just to clear the interview and to understand the Spark much better because this covers all the core concept and what is parallelism, how the job get executed and how this parallel processing framework works and all those things you will get an idea. And so that you can learn any other parallel processing like technology like Strom or Spark or Flink, whatever it is. So that is what the need of having MapReduce at this point of time on your checklist. Okay. So I've just told you the importance of MapReduce and, uh, and, and like MapReduce is part of Hadoop project. Okay, fine. So let's let's just uh, uh, 
like let, let me just give you an overview of few questions so these questions are collected from the people who always used to ask me as the questions before I start map reduce okay so I've just collected few question out of what people have asked and I consider always to clear this question or to discuss this question and answers first and then moving on to map reduce the core part so that you will have a better idea fine and if you have any other questions in between like you can specify that in the comment box so I'll take time to respond to you back fine so now uh, what is map reduce called okay so wh what made me to have this question here is because like people always used to say map reduce is an algorithm okay so no one uh, tells you wrong or no one is like people are like they will correct you if you say something no it's not for that it's for your self understanding so map reduce is not an algorithm it it, it, it is consists of algorithms but map reduce is, is called you can call it as a batch processing framework or a processing framework or a massive parallel processing framework okay so it's like combination of HDFS and map reduce is what your Hadoop is okay HDFS is a file system map reduce is a processing framework and spark is also a processing framework like batch processing and stream processing framework even spark also like people People used to say up in proper term but when it comes to map reduce people sometimes they call it as map reduce algorithm map reduce is a place where you can write algorithm and they are like const of lot of algorithm that is all fine but the thing is you have to call it as processing framework and the next question what language we use in map reduce and Java by default so that is by default when I use the word default and that means when I used <coughs> so what language we use in MapReduce and Java by default so when I say default it is configurable like you can you can write a code in C, C++, Python, Ruby, Perl so you can use any other languages in MapReduce but the performance wise it always good if we people write in Java because that is a JVM based language or you have to use any other JVM based language or else it will take time to convert uh, the part of the, the code what you have written to a JVM based code and then it takes time in the compilation okay Java is default and that is best and at one advantage of using MapReduce or why I have to use MapReduce see I'm, I'm telling you some logic and you know Java and you can implement it right so why should I have to write why should I have to go for a framework like MapReduce or Spark what is the need of it see the framework the word itself has the framework framework is all about like you just concentrate on the coding part rest all will be taken care by the framework right you go for some kind of an uh, gated apartments where you have a lot of uh, facilities over there right so people will take care of it the the management will take of, care of it and what what you have to do is just you live there that's it so the remaining all environmental aspects the people who works there for your apartment community people will take care so that is actually an environment you say a gated apartment you say right so that is how the framework is see generally you want to uh, run your java code okay you are writing a java code and you know the logic is fine but who will take care of distributing the job the task what you have written the code has to be get distributed so it has to be run and multi-threaded and what happen if one particular subtask get, that get fails it has to be get restarted it should not restart the entire tasks it has to just restart only that particular task and who will monitor the job and what if something failure happens what is the next steps needs to be done and who takes care of the task scheduling and who takes care of the cluster management who takes care of the execution then you need to write all this right so not only the the logic what you have to run is not important here then you have to write all these environmental aspects right and that is where the framework is giving you everything you can see here cluster monitoring resource allocation so I have a RAM and for your map release job how much uh, RAM need to be get allocated right so that is taken care by the framework it's all about configuration you just mentioned the size so that the job will the framework will take care cluster management so what happen if that particular node goes down or your task goes down scheduling right so map reduce internally it has a scheduler to run the task right so it has fair and capacity scheduler maybe in my upcoming videos I will explain you about that so so what what who will take care of that scheduling part so map produce will take care of it execution so you submit the job and the execution part will be taken care by your framework and speculative execution is another type of execution I will teach you sometime later you can just stay touch with my playlist I'm uploading all the topics so whenever I say the topic which will which I will upload in future you can have a uh, look in my playlist so that if the video is available you can have a look 
Okay, fine. So these are all. So these are these are the points which is even applicable for Spark as well. So someone asks you why Spark? You know Scala, you know Java, you know Python, and you know how to implement it. You just do it. Why should you have to choose Spark? Why should I have to choose MapReduce? Why you have to choose Flink or Storm or any other framework? Because the framework is giving you all these advantages, right? So MapReduce gives you all these advantages, and that is why I'm choosing MapReduce, and then I'm going with the logic only. I don't want to worry about any framework related stuff. Okay. aim of map reduce to achieve data locality and that means so the blocks are stored in hdfs and on top of hdfs your task has to identify which data node has that particular task or the block gets stored and in that machine the task should be get executed and that is what we call it as data locality that is very important for map reduce to provide fine then the main use of map reduce the question number 5 people used to ask me this parallelism it's a it's a distributed parallel processing framework and alternate of map reduce okay spark okay i want to tell you one thing here so uh, spark is alternate of map reduce in hadoop but what happened when people used to say right hadoop is dead hadoop is gone but the the point what you need to remember is hadoop is not dead only the spark has been replaced sorry only the map reduce has been replaced by spark it's not like your hdfs is gone your hive is gone your pig is gone uzi is gone no it's not like that i just wanted to tell you one one uh, conversation that happened uh, with my friend so he told me like gautam you 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 have to be it's it's i'm roughly telling like 6 5 7 years back i hope so so he told me like spark is something that is entering into picture how do this did you have to use spark and then i was like okay fine so can you tell me your project architecture my friend started explaining so we have spark we write rdd data frame my question is to him so what is the input where the input gets stored so he said the input is in hdfs okay fine so i asked him whether you are using any query engine other than spark or spark sql he said hive so that means so he he is still using the word hdfs hive and for scheduler they used uzi and for data migration for uh, data from uh, rdbms to hadoop he used scoop so he is telling all the hadoop ecosystem component name and he still says hadoop is dead so i just repeated this to him so i told him uh, see like you 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 said hadoop is dead but still you are using hdfs you are using uh, hive you are, you are using scoop but how you can say that hadoop is dead it is still there even now it's it's 2022 even now the components in hadoop are still evergreen other than map reduce hive is a very important concept that we need to know always for sure even it is spark or uh, map reduce right so the important thing what we need to understand is hadoop is not replaced by spark only the map reduce part was replaced by spark okay fine so demons in map reduce okay i missed uh, the question number 6 abstraction of map reduce which is very very important for us to know hive pig scoop uzi these four components or it's 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 the four components will work only when your map reduce is running and map reduce is abstraction is an engine acted for these four components so we call hive pig scoop uzi as an abstraction of map reduce the reason is hive still uses the map reduce engine but just to avoid java they invented hive facebook invented hive and pig runs on map reduce only just to avoid java pig was invented by yahoo and we write pig latin script and scoop you know right scoop is to migrate the data from rdbms to hadoop hadoop to rdbms so if scoop was not there you have to write a code to do this in map reduce and uzi is a scheduler right so if if uzi is a, as a scheduler it runs with the help of the engine map reduce now imagine this the, the, there may be one question in your mind so if map reduce is replaced by spark and that means whether these four components can run on spark also s yes. you can run hive pig scoop uzi on top of spark also okay because these are like having that compatibility to run with spark engine as well as map reduce map reduce engine you can just turn on turn off that's it fine so abstraction of map reduce when someone ask you have to say these four questions and demons in map reduce so at this point of time we have hadoop two architectures right hadoop version 1 till version 1 there was one traditional architecture and from version 2 onwards there is a modern architecture right so we have these two so when with respect to till the version of hadoop 1 the map reduce demon name is job tracker and task tracker so we have five demons name node 
uh, data node, secondary name node. So these three daemon comes under HDFS and job tracker and task tracker comes under MapReduce daemons, right? So in Hadoop 2, the daemon name of MapReduce has been changed to resource manager and node manager. This is in the Hadoop 2 architecture, they have implemented yawn and then they've changed the name of this and I will tell you what is yawn at the end of the video or at the beginning. So in the same video, I'm going to cover that as well. Fine. So these are some of the question I always used to consider uh, to be get discussed before starting the actual topic of MapReduce. Fine. So let's get into the topic. So I'm going to uh, take this video step by step so that you will not confused, you will not be confused and you have to be very clear in understanding the core concepts. That is what my agenda and goal. Okay. Now, Let's discuss about MapReduce. So before uh, getting into MapReduce, what is the generic definition of map and reduce? So map means parallelism, okay? And reduce means grouping all finally to one. So this is what map and reduce is, a general meaning of map and reduce is, okay? And map and reduce are the two transformations we have in MapReduce framework. So now let's consider an example of paper correction okay so you have done like uh, you 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 have done your board examinations right so like 10th uh, and your uh, uh, plus 2 that is grade 2 and in your 10th you used to write board examination where the test papers will not be get corrected within your school right it goes to the different places to the different schools and they will correct and they will announce you the board exam result so let's take that as an example okay now imagine there is one particular resource okay uh, teacher one okay teacher one so uh, to this particular teacher, I'm giving you like 500 or 50 or something, okay, test papers, okay. So let's consider some very small number here. So what I'll do here, I, I will go with 20 papers, 20 test papers I'm giving to this teacher one and I'm asking them to correct and took this first rank. And now what, is, what this particular teacher is taking, one minute per paper, one minute per paper and that means the overall 20 minutes to correct all the paper and to fetch the topper. Now, how to, uh, like, how can I increase the performance of this? So, you have to distribute it. So, first, what I will do, I will distribute this 20 papers to this four resource, each five. Okay. So, this is teacher one, teacher two, teacher three, and teacher four. And imagine they are from different districts, different cities. Okay. Now, Again, I'm giving them the same task. The task is to fetch top first. Okay, so now this teacher will at the first minute, at the first minute, this particular teacher will complete the first paper correction, right? At the same first minute, second teacher will complete the first paper of out of the five what I have given and so on. So, right now, so from this particular node, I will be getting top first topper and from this particular node I will be getting topper and from this I will get topper and from this I will get topper so that means district first district first district first and district first so generally we used to have district first and then the state first right this is how the results will work right so now we got district first and to get the district first what was what is the overall time that has been taken one minute for each paper to each teacher and this is parallelly happening okay that is very important they are doing parallelly so that means it took five minutes for them to complete the district first now again I have to consolidate this and I have to fetch only the final one guy the topper which is state first right so I have to go for it so now what generally happens the district wise paper correction will be happen and the results will be uh, transferred to a different uh, place different or capital of the state right so now consider I am from Tamil Nadu so I will consider Chennai is the capital of Tamil Nadu so all this district first information goes to a different node or the different place I will call that as Chennai okay this is Chennai okay now here the input for this particular node comes from these four nodes so i'll get four papers four papers as input and now again the job for this particular node is to fetch topper so the same logic it has to be get executed here as well and here this particular node takes one minute for one paper so it will take four minutes and finally you will get topper the state first now five in this district wise and then four minute on state first so finally 
in nine minutes the job got completed so if it is one particular resource handling all the 20 papers and that two not in parallel then it is 20 minutes so almost 60 percentage we are reducing the time and by increasing the performance right we are increasing the performance so from 20 minutes to the time has been reduced to nine minutes and that is where the real parallelism comes into picture but but the but you will save more time as well but this is just an example i'm telling you and this traditional uh, uh, real world example will help you to understand the technicality what it has so that is why i always used to explain this paper correction example to all my students fine now so let's consider what this district district part the transformation happened district wise we call it as mapper side and what that happened in the uh, uh, capital side that is the final node which aggregates all the output of the district we call that as a reducer so this is the reducer side so you have a different java code for mapper side and the different java code for reducer side in my example the code what you have written in mapper side and the reducer side is same but it, it may not be in that way it can be different also reducer can have a different logic mapper can have a different logic okay so i'm going to show you one practical example in this video itself in that we are going to do a sales data processing where mapper side has a different logic reducer side has a different logic but but to understand the uh, picture I'm, I'm explaining you with this example okay now we have to answer some four questions before proceeding to the next step okay let's take the mapper side first okay what is the input for this particular mapper okay what is the input so here the input is the test papers right five papers each node right so this test paper technically we call it as blocks because you are reading it from HDFS. So blocks or the input for mapper. Second question. So the second question is, so where the input data gets stored? Okay, the answer is straightforward HDFS. So the next question in the, in the, in the same, in the same second question. So only HDFS is the input or only from HDFS the mapper can read it. So it's not like that. It's not only HDFS. MapReduce program can read from HDFS, can read from your local file system, that is your Linux or Windows. It can read directly from RDBMS. It can read from any other uh, databases or a file system. Uh, it should be a landing area for sure. So MapReduce will not support streaming. That is very important. You cannot read the data from Kafka or some Flume. So you can't do that. So MapReduce will read only the batch data. The data should be get presented in some storage layer. So HDFS is something default that MapReduce can read, but you can even connect to NoSQL databases, RDBMS, Linux file system, NAS mount, whatever it is, highly possible. Okay. So it could be any NoSQL or RDBMS or files that means your file systems okay the next question the same for reducer so input for reducer okay input for reducer is from the diagram you can say easily output of mapper that is map output right that is that is what right so the input for reducer is map output the next question so reducer writes the output to hdfs always so same HDFS, you can write it to NoSQL, you can write it to RDBMS, you can write it to any other file system. That is highly possible. So you, it could, it could be anything. HDFS, NoSQL, RDBMS, etc. Because uh, when, when I used to ask this question in, in the interviews, right? So when people, I, when I ask people, like where you, uh, where MapReduce will write the output means they used to say HDFS, and I will ask only HDFS, or you can write it in any other place. They will say no, we can't uh, write. So sometimes, so because, uh, uh, so I, I will not consider uh, that as a point, but the stick, but the thing is, but I'm trying to understand whether what level of understanding that they have. Okay, so generally MapReduce questions I used to ask, but based on that, I, I will not uh, validate the candidate because like, yeah, the recent times in the last two to three years, people are skipping MapReduce and they are straight away, they are moving to Spark and they are mastering them in Spark, but that is okay. But that is okay uh, to do in that way, but it is good to know MapReduce as well as a base, which is very important. So I just used to test by just asking such questions from MapReduce, but I will not validate with that answers. Okay, I'll, I'll validate based on Spark and other uh, things what we use uh, in, in the project. Okay, fine. So this is something we need to know. So now you are very clear. So mapper is getting the data. Uh, the input is blocks and then output can be written in any places and reducer wise, reducer also 
like its map output is the input for reducer and it can write into any place and there's one more question so I, I, I wanted to tell you is so this particular mapper you can see district wise so how many uh, teachers are here four teachers that means four task in mapper side and how many teacher is correcting the paper here one teacher that is one task so that means in mapper we have four task and reducer we have one task who decides it someone has to decide right so here four mappers are running but how it is four okay so number of mappers so number of mappers decided by what or who is deciding it so the answer is very important to note the point here so number of blocks is equal to number of mapper this is very 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 important for example you have a, a, a 1 GB file you are distributing in HDFS with the block size of 64 MB means you will have 1 GB divided by uh, 64 MB means you will get 16 blocks that means you will have 16 mappers for that particular job now the same question for reducer number of reducer number of reducer decide by who it's by you that means the developer has can, can decide so how many reducer you want whether one reducer or two reducer or three reducer you are supposed to decide that now imagine uh, the same diagram you take so now uh, now now have the district first are completed but due to some reason uh, they want so my state which i belongs to is tamil nadu okay so i to already told you right so now imagine there is a ask so I have to split the state first into two that is North Tamil Nadu state first South Tamil Nadu state first they need two state first due to some reason imagine just we create a, a use cases okay now in that case you have to go for two reducers here so one reducer will get the data from South Tamil Nadu papers and one reducer will get North Tamil Nadu papers and then they will finally come to two state first one for North Tamil Nadu one for South Tamil Nadu okay so sometime like people used to ask me but this question is not valid but for for the from the beginners it is fine to ask okay I'm, I'm expecting but but it is not a valid question they used to ask can I again make this two reducer to one reducer no that is not possible if that is the case then just have one reducer why you want to have two reducer and then again one reducer okay that is not possible and the question is not valid okay so you, the, the why we need two reducer because we need two final output if you need one final output then please go with one reducer then why you are splitting the reason into two okay that is my thing fine and this is not possible because uh, see uh, a map and reduce is possible like again a reducer after a reducer is not possible okay you have to write a separate program for it so in spark you can do that but you cannot do that in map reduce okay that is a uh, one uh, we do have a lot of difference between map reduce and spark one such is so the continuous processing which is not possible map reduce one program and again a map reduce you have to write a different program map map reduce is possible but you cannot do map reduce and then the reduce or a mapper you cannot do in the same program it should be a different so for each and every output the the data should get landed somewhere in between fine so this is one thing i wanted to tell you so now uh, so i will tell you how to change the reducer or how to increase the task all uh, the things we will be discussing and one more thing back to this number of mapper concept so number of block equal to number of mapper this is default okay i will i'm adding this very important default and that means it is not always the case equal it can be not equal also but for now okay but for now just imagine number of blocks equal to number of mapper but when I use the word default and that means you can change for example you have uh, let me change the color you have three blocks that means you should have three mappers but even for three blocks you can have six mappers and even for three blocks you can have one mapper also so this is what default is but I will explain you there is a def different concept called input split with that I will I will tell you what is this default and how that is possible but for now please imagine number of blocks equal to number of mappers okay fine so this is the first level of understanding map reduce and I will slowly move on to the next phase that is the next level of map reduce and this is the next topic okay so let me just open a new board just give me a second so I will just first uh, teach you with all the uh, MapReduce version 1 of topics and then uh, at the end I will explain you MapReduce v2 the version 2 topic 
Okay. So now I am going to explain you uh, in a very uh, layman terms. Like if I am submitting a MapReduce program, right? If I submit a MapReduce program, and how the submission happens. Okay. So I am going to give you a, a picture of how the task gets submits and who who executes the task and who will take care of the failure and all those stuff and we are going to discuss almost three architecture diagrams in this video this is the first level of architecture so the demons so i'm i'm going to explain you how the demons works so here now you are the developer you are writing a program so in MapReduce we write the program map and reduce as the same one single dot java file and then we will convert that as a jar file okay so we convert that as a jar file and then we used to execute so even with respect to spark also we build a jar file and then we used to submit right so same way so here i have a jar file so this jar file consists of my mapper and reducer class it's a one single java file okay so uh, let me show you how to define mapper class reducer class and all those stuff so now you are just sending this request so this request goes to the daemon job tracker job tracker so as i told you already first i will go with version 1 hadoop architecture and then i will move on to the latest architecture of map reduce okay there is no very big difference but i will tell you that later so now what after receiving uh, the request what job tracker can do is so the job tracker can able to do uh, the the set of five things which i showed you right so uh, cluster monitoring resource allocation cluster management scheduling execution right so job tracker can do all this but before that job tracker needs to know where the block is present because uh, wherever the block present on top of that block only the mapper should start its task right because block is the input for mapper so job tracker doesn't have that information so you can think uh, this is a question that i'm asking you so which particular uh, daemon is responsible to store the information about the blocks it is name node right so name node has all the metadata information for all the file that you have uploaded so now what job tracker will do job tracker will send a request it's kind of a read request to get the information about the file for example you are submitting the jar file with the input file so imagine there is an input file which you are passing data dot txt so on top of this data dot txt your jar file that is the map reduce program should run so this data dot txt file is not there with the job tracker because job tracker doesn't know any information about it so after uh, uh, sending the request the job tracker will send the request to name node so name node which consists of the metadata information of the blocks right so metadata so now name node sends the metadata information to the job tracker as a response so this is a request and this is a response now imagine uh, the data txt present as two blocks okay b0 and b1 so this name node sends the response with including the replication information as well so for example b0 three copies and then b1 three copies with its location also for example one two three and three uh, four five so b0 first three copy of b0 present in first node second node third node and b1 of three copies first copy in third node fourth uh, b1 second copy in fourth node b1 third copy in fifth node so this is what the information name node sends to job tracker but job tracker which will consider only the one uh, replica it's not like uh, it is it is waste to run the job in all the three replicas right so it just picks one which is very near to the job tracker and it runs it so now imagine let's configure data node okay so data node plus task tracker the combination is slave right so data node task tracker data node and task tracker so let me have one more node data node and task tracker okay so now uh, b0 present in first node of the under data node which is in first node and then third node is what b3 first copy right so b1 so b1 first copy in third node b0 first copy in the second node sorry first node so just imagine we don't want to go for any other application let's take only one copy so now what job tracker will do first job tracker will run the map job inside the jar so job tracker assigns the task to task tracker but not the data node because data node is slave for name node task tracker is slave for job tracker okay so job tracker which which just sends the map task parallelly to both the nodes task tracker okay now after receiving this the task tracker will launch a map jvm which is nothing but a map task 
parallelly it gets started. So now what this task tracker will do, right? So this task tracker will read the data from the data node that is the B0 and it will start the processing here. The same way this task tracker will read from the data node the B1 and it will start the process here. So both the process runs at the same time. Now imagine the mapper is completed. So now these two jobs started parallelly at the same time and maybe in some fraction of seconds one may, one may get complete first and the second task may get uh, a fraction of second delay also. So once this mapper is completed where the output of mapper will be get stored that is very important. So the output of mapper I will write, I'll write here. Okay. So output of mapper output of mapper will get store in local file system local file system of that particular machine so for example the output of b0 will be get stored in the local file system of this node and then the output of b1 will be get stored in the local file system that is linux means your file system name in linux is ext okay ext is the local file system name in linux okay so now it gets stores here and very important it won't store in memory whereas if you take spark spark can store it intermediate data that is the output of the previous transformation in memory also also it can store it in the disk also but MapReduce will always store it in the disk the intermediate result so we they, we can call it as mapper output or you can call it as an intermediate data so in interview they can sometime uh, tell you like intermediate data. So intermediate data in MapReduce means it is mapper output. Don't get confused. Okay. So mapper output otherwise called as an intermediate data. So the mapper output will be get stored always in the local file system of that node in which it got executed. Okay. Now the information. So how job tracker will come to know that the mapper is completed. So map task tracker also sends the heartbeat. So in HDFS data nodes uh, send heartbeat for every three seconds to the name node, right? In the similar way, task tracker will send heartbeat to the job tracker okay so three second heartbeat so with the heartbeat job tracker will come to know okay the particular task is successful now once the mapper is completed once all the mapper is completed job tracker will start the reducer task okay so this reducer can uh, task can get started in any one of the node in which mapper got completed or any other free node that is completely uh, the job tracker choice. Now imagine it is getting started in a new node. Okay, let's let's have a for for better diagram purpose. I'm going for a new node, but it is not always the case. Even the node which completed with the mapper in the same node, job tracker can start the reducer task. Now here the task is started, so it will start the reduce JVM. Okay, now. Once task tracker mean once the reduce task is started, job tracker will inform to these two mapper node. I will make it as M here, and this is R to these two mapper node. Job tracker will inform that the reducer is started in the fourth node. Please transfer your output to the fourth node. So these two node task tracker, the output which gets stored in the local file system, right? It will be get transferred from mapper node to reducer node via HTTP protocol. Okay, HTTP protocol. So once the reducer task, so it directly goes to the task tracker. Once the reducer is completed, the reducer output also gets stored in the local file system first and then it goes to HDFS. Okay, it, it finally goes to HDFS, but it first gets stored in the local and then it goes to HDFS. Local means the local file system of the fourth node and then it goes to HDFS. The final output is in HDFS. So the heartbeat, same way, reducer task tracker also since the heartbeat to the job tracker about the task completion then the job tracker will consider the job is completed now we just discussed about the complete success cases now what about the failure cases now imagine so imagine like uh, let me change the color so imagine like one of the node uh, so the task has been assigned to the first node okay now during the uh, task running like while running right so while in progress this particular node is down or dead so immediately the whole job will not be get killed that is very important only that particular task will be get restarted and i will tell you how so this job tracker will 
get the negative acknowledgement saying that this particular node is dead. Instead of killing all other running mapper tasks, what job tracker will do is job tracker will get the second replication information from the name node. For example, the second copy of B0 present in second node. Now immediately job tracker reassign the task to the second node task tracker and then the task only that particular task will be get restarted instead of killing all other tasks. When there is no replication, then obviously your mapper your mapper this job will be getting failed that is for sure so the same way in the reducer as well so this is how you whenever you submit a jar file this is how internally what internally happens is this so next one more thing i wanted to tell you this is very important so this whatever i'm explaining you now which you can even relate with spark also when you start reading spark architecture you can relate everything to spark architecture as well now one more thing now imagine the data.txt has three blocks now. Okay, B0, B1, B2. Totally three blocks now. And this B2 block also present in the first node. The first copy of B2 present in the first node. Imagine. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the next new case. Okay, that's why I'm purposefully allocating this B2 in the first node where already B0 is there. Okay, I'm purposefully allocating. This case also will happen, right? For sure it happens. Because we don't know whether the blocks what we are giving is resides on the same node where other blocks are reside or in a different node. We doesn't know. And this kind of cases also comes. Now how job tracker handles this? So now imagine uh, if, if, the ta if, if task, for example, the job tracker assigns the map task to the first node and the third node, parallelism is there, it's all fine. Okay, two different nodes parallelly in two different nodes it is running. How about if two blocks, two different blocks present in the same node when in that case whether the map reduce will happen, whether the mappers will run in parallel within the machine or one by one. That is the question here. So in the same node two blocks are presented. Even in the production cluster also this happens. So the same two, two blocks, two different blocks of the same file present in the same node. In that case whether the parallelism will really work within the node also yes of course it works see by default your task tracker whenever the request comes from job tracker it spans two jvm two mapper jvm and two reducer jvm by default okay two mapper jvm and two reducer jvm so even though the task tracker has one block with that node also it will span to JVM but if it is only one block then the second one will be in idle state means it won't utilize any resource but by default it launches to now if you come to this case now here when the task comes okay when here the task come task tracker will span two mapper JVM at the same time so one will be running on this here B0 and another one will be running here in the same way if you see the third node also when the request come task tracker will span two JVM but here only one B1 only one block is there so only one thread will be used the next one will be in idle state that means the JVM will uh, the mapper won't get any resource or it won't lock or utilize any resource now again the next case now the data.txt has four blocks b3 okay now b3 also resides on the first node imagine now in this case what happens as you said the task tracker by default it spans only two JVM that means one for b0 one for b2 then what about b3 b3 will be in queue in the same node it will be in queue it will wait either b0 or b2 get complete once it is completed then task tracker will pick the b3 or what you can do is you can increase this limit like task tracker spans to jvm by default right you can increase this to three at a time four at a time that also you can do so there is a configuration in map red and site.xml you can change but one important thing you need to know is because see uh, uh, we don't know how many count uh, to specify for that configuration by default is two but we cannot ha achieve hundred percent parallelism within the node when the blocks are different blocks of the same file present on the same node, you cannot achieve 100% parallelism because we don't know how many parallel tasks needed for that particular job in that particular node. Only then if you know, you can increase the size, right? 5, 6 or something. So when you increase, that is the same configuration will be used by other file also or your job level config you can specify. But even if you specify job level configuration changes to increase the parallelism for from the task tracker from 2 to 4, for example, 2 is default two tasks at the time. Now you want to increase it to four, but how come you will decide that as four? Because you don't know whether the blocks of the same file, different blocks of the same file resides on the same node and, and that too we have to increase to four or five. See in the real time, you can check the property people will have like 
three blocks, three tasks at, at a time it should span or four. They, they, they have some kind of a decent count, but, but it is not like guaranteed in the same node, 100% parallelism will be achieved for the same file of different blocks. That is for guarantee, I'm telling you. But at least different nodes will have the parallelism. That is 100% parallelisms will be there. But in the same node, parallelism will not be in that case. One by one, it will pick. If the number of parallel threads that get triggered at the same time, you give four also. Imagine you have five blocks in that machine, then the fifth block will be in queue. The same thing happens in the Spark also. Okay, this is a very deep level understanding is required. So people will think parallelism, different node parallelism is fine. Same node parallelism means you cannot achieve it for 100%. Okay, because we don't know how many parallel tasks that I can give for that particular node. You know the volume of the file or you know the uh, 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 data, specific data, what, what volume, but everything you know, but you don't know which block of this particular file goes to which node that we don't know only name node knows it right so we don't have that block information and even if we know that block information also it is very complex for us to decide right because you have like uh, th 200 nodes of production cluster and you have 3 TB 4 TB of file will be scattered into different nodes the same blocks in the same node or different blocks of the same file in the different node or in the same node so 100% parallelism within a node is not 100% possible okay so this diagram i hope you understood better so this is the first level of diagram which everybody should know now when you start reading spark architecture in my playlist also i have spark videos you can go through the video but the thing is when you read spark after this you will be having a better clarity because 80 percentage of the architecture what i explained the same way is spark also works in the same way fine so now we can move on to the next topic let me change my uh, slide let me change my whiteboard. Just give me a second. So the next topic what we are going to discuss about is MapReduce input and output format. Okay. So uh, we have the storage formats, right? In Hive, you have storage format. In Spark and all, you have different storage format. In similar way, MapReduce has input and output formats. The way how you send the data to Mapper and the way that how you get the data out from the reducer. Okay, so we have input and output formats. So if, if the next level of this particular diagram is you have mapper input and you have mapper output, right? And then you have reducer input and then you have reducer output. So four phases you have one, two, three, four. So you need to specify what is the input format that you use for your input data and output format from mapper and input format to the reducer and output format to the reducer so you have to specify that so we have like four to five input and output formats i will tell you one by one so this is what i wanted to tell you and the input and output format should be always key value pair that is very important that is mapper input is key value pair mapper output should be key value pair reducer input should be key value pair and reducer output should be key value pair so everything that comes inside mapper goes outside reducer should be key value pairs Okay, you have if, if, if that data doesn't have the key value pair, you have to make your data to split. This is what key and this is what value you have to do. So let me tell you one by one the format and practically when I show you with in the code, you will understand it. Fine. So now what I'll, I'll do, I'll just erase this. Fine. So the very first default input format that we have uh, in the map reduces text input and text output format text input and text output format. So now imagine I have a data. So one comma Gautam comma and then I have a product. I'm buying a product mobile and then I'm giving my gender which is male and then the amount of the product. Imagine this is what the input data. Now in interview they can ask you if I use text input and text output format in MapReduce, what is my key and what is my value for this particular data? Now, if you take text input and text output format, the input key is always offset of the record, offset of the record. And value is the remaining line, remaining line of the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, whole line of the record whole line of the record that means whole line of the record means one comma Gautam comma 
up to 100 this is the whole record okay this is value then what what about the key offset means the starting position of your record for example in the notepad if you have this record means you will have the starting position right 0 1 2 3 4 etc imagine the last ends with 21 next to 2 comma saravanan comma some record and 200 that means the next two will be started from 22 because here 100 last zero ends with 21 so the number two in the next line starts with 22 new line is the delimiter here so this is what offset so that means zero is the key and the whole line is the value and for the second record 22 is the key and the whole line is the record so this is what the text input and output format and we have something called key value input and output format input and output format so when you use this format the key is up to first tab delimiter the tab can be comma also you can change it or semicolon anything but default is tab so the remaining line remaining line is value so in in our case if you take one is the key and from gautam to 100 is the value and for the second record 2 is the key from Saravanan to 200 is value okay so like that we have three more input and output formats I will tell you in upcoming videos and imagine like if by default any of the text files that you have you can obviously go for this text and uh, text input and text output format this will be the perfect one okay so because here uh, the whole value is coming under uh, the whole line of the record comes under the value so that even you can do your own custom key and value pairs also but I will tell you that in the practical I will show you a Java code and I will tell you but whatever I have explained you keep keep it in the mind I know you have some doubts here but I will clear that out in the um, practical video and imagine this is this whatever the input format I am telling you is for uh, HDFS means but what about if I am reading it from HBase and HBase provides you a text input format called table input format table output format without input format you cannot read or you cannot write so now what about if I connect this to MongoDB or Cassandra kind of NoSQL database the MongoDB and Cassandra should provide an input format and output format and then only you can able to connect with MapReduce or if there is no input format provided by a particular database which you are connecting for example I am connecting my SQL and there is no input and output format means you have to write custom input format custom output format you have to write and but 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 luckily we have for MapReduce for connecting to RDBMS we have DB input and DB output format for HBase also we have Cassandra also we have MongoDB also MongoDB provides it you can use it and then uh, you can even for XML JSON and all also you have input formats or else you can write your own custom input and custom output format but 80 percentage of the coding things the input format we can use text input and text output format if the data is very readable and delimited but but as I told you practically we won't use much the map reduce part but these are all important uh, for understanding as I told you you will at, you will understand the upcoming frameworks like spark or strom or any other framework easily by knowing all this stuff okay so any technology you take there is some storage format but in map reduce we call it as input and output formats when I show you the map reduce code you will understand better now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you another diagram uh, before showing you the practical MapReduce code I wanted uh, to uh, show that code in the diagrammatic representation how the data flows and the logic happens okay so now I'll show you that and to get into the diagram you need to know this text input and text output format for sure and then in the diagram I will teach you the remaining thing so this is the diagram I was telling to you so uh, here this this diagram is just a conversion of the program I've converted the program into a diagram okay so now imagine in the top right corner you can see I have seven records which is B0 B1 it's a sales record so one comma Amazon comma mobile 2002 comma Amazon TV 100 three comma Flipkart product purchased is AC and the price is 3000 like that you have seven records and imagine that they are split into two blocks in HDFS and this is already stored in HDFS now what we are trying to do in MapReduce is we are trying to achieve the equivalent query in the MapReduce program. You can see in the bottom right corner select platform comma sum 
of amount from sales group by platform. So my output is I have to group all the platform that is Amazon, Flipkart and eBay as a group it and then you have to do the summation of the amount. Like you can see here K4V4 Amazon total purchased happened sales happened is 8500 in eBay 7800 in Flipkart 17000. This is what my expected output for this particular query. Now imagine in Hadoop there is no hive. Imagine because this can be done in Hive. So in one of my class, one, one guy raised a question like, uh, uh, Hive is again abstraction of MapReduce, right? So instead of writing a Java code in MapReduce, we can go ahead and write it in Hive. This query, I can copy paste in Hive, I will get the result and the same performance of MapReduce, right? So now, now imagine to understand the code of MapReduce, imagine there is no Hive. So this is a query they have executed in MySQL. Now they migrated it to MapReduce. Imagine now you have to write the equivalent Java code in MapReduce and I'm explaining you the program flow architecture with the coding part. Okay. So this diagram is conversion of code into diagram. That's it. So this is the query. Now before starting writing a code, you need this kind of diagram first. Now imagine uh, which part of this query I have to write in mapper side and which part of the query I have to write it in the reducer side. So the agenda here is you have to first select platform and amount. Platform means Amazon, Flipkart, eBay is platform. Amount is amount column. You have to first filter these two, select these two column and then you have to do the summation on amount column and then you have to group by platform. So the first part you have to select two column. First you select it. Even you execute this in the MySQL or RDBMS, any, any RDBMS also, even in high, what happened? First it will select the column and then it will do the aggregation, right? So the same way, first we, in the mapper side, we write only the select logic. That is in the given five column, select Amazon and 2000. That is platform and amount. That is the only thing I'm writing into the mapper side. So in mapper side, I'm writing this. So if you see here the input K1 V1, as I told you, we have mapper input, mapper output, reducer input, reducer output. There is four phases of key value pairs. That's why K1 V1, K2 V2, you can see here K2 V2 and then K3 V3 and then K4 V4. Right? So I have four phases here. Mapper input key value pair, mapper output key value pair, and then mapper reducer input key value pair and reducer output key value pair. I hope you got it. Right. Now in map side, I'm so before coming into map side, you can see like we have two mappers because we have two blocks. Number of blocks equal to number of mapper. And you can see here I'm using text input and text output format in K1 V1. You can see because here you can see the offset of the key, right? So zero. And the value is the whole line. Now imagine 2000, the last zero ends 30, 30th. Now the next second record starts with 31st. And 2 comma Amazon and when you, when you see the 1000, the last zero of second record ends with 55. So the third record starts with 56. And, and continuation in the next block. So you can see the flip card 3000, last zero ends with 77. So the fourth record 4 starts with 78. And very important, the second block will be the continuation. It's not like again K1 will be zero for the second block, no. Okay, so like that it is coming. Now when it comes to mapper, I am doing the select logic. <clears throat> I am doing the select logic and the output of mapper, which is K2V2, right? So select part. So out of this five column, <clears throat> I am selecting only two column, which is amount and the uh, product uh, platform and amount. That is my output of mapper. So this mapper output will be get stored where? In the local file system of that particular node. Okay. Now, before going to reducer, there is something called shuffle. We'll shuffle the mapper output. Actually, I have uh, given this in the middle of the diagram, but this shuffle actually happens in the reducer side. Okay, sort by key, group by key. Now, the mapper output will be get shorted and then it will be get grouped. Now, if you see the diagram, it got shorted. So first mapper, it got shorted and the second mapper, it got shorted. So actually, it will be shorted and grouped. Okay, so I, I just missed, missed that in the diagram. So let me show you in the notepad. So let me do it here. So here the output will be Amazon. So it will be shorted and then it will be get grouped. So I'll first, uh, and, and very important, short and group is based on the key. In interview, people can ask you, map ready shuffle is based on value or key or both. You have to say it is only based on key, short by key, group by key. That's it. So the keys will be get shorted. So flip cart and then eBay. So your 
before it goes to the reducer method the shuffle will be get executed on the mapper output and this is what your k3 v3 the k3 v3 what i am what i have written in the diagram is wrong sorry for that so what actually happens here is the k3 v3 will be grouped result so if you see amazon uh, the values will not be get grouped so that's why here values get stored in the list okay list and all we don't want to use it in the code it it uh, it internally map reduce shuffle will take care okay so here uh 2000 and then 1000 and then 3000 which is from amazon right and then for flipkart and then for flipkart it is uh 3000 uh, and then flipkart we have one more flipkart from the second uh, node mapper output right 5000 and 9000 so 5000 and then 9000 and then ebay so eBay is we have only one eBay that is in the second node so 7800 so this is what k3v3 is this is the shuffle output so uh, in the diagram k3v3 what I have given is wrong that is my mistake sorry but it is a grouped output shuffle output is grouped output so this is what your k3v3 so this is k and uh, this is v okay this is this is k3 and v3 let me put k3 v3 now this will be your input for reducer so after receiving that what reducer will do it will first read the key amazon and then it will do the summation by iterating the list and then next it will uh, take flipkart it will iterate the list and then ebay and then it will iterate the list very important see record wise it won't iterate means you don't want to write any logic to iterate it okay you have to write a logic in the reducer side to iterate the list only not iterating the record iterating the record and mapper side and reducer side the framework will take care you only in the reducer side you have to iterate the list for that we have written some for loop or while loop you can do okay so when the code part comes i will explain so this is what i have explained in this diagram so the same thing i am going to show you in the code but before getting into it so the input and output format we have to decide so k1 uh, is as i told you we are using text input and text output format as i told you so we have decided the input format now what about the data type so i want to tell you something about the data type in MapReduce. so before getting into the code let me just explain you the data type part so let me open a new whiteboard okay so data type so map reduce java data type and then map reduce data type see before getting into data type see data that gets like mapper mission and reducer mission right so mapper will send the output to the reducer via http i told you right so the data that get transfers in the network io will be in a serdi format that means serialized and deserialized and do i need to take care of doing this no map reduce is doing that for you so for that they are designed the data type in a different way so that the data type itself will take care of doing the serialization and we call that as serialization in normal world we call it as writables in map reduce okay now in java if you say int means in map reduce it is called int writable because whenever you see map reduce code you will see some weird data types int writable and people used to ask me what is that and if there is a float and here it is float writable and for string in java in map reduce we call it as text only it is not text writable so don't think this is not serialized it is also serialized data type but they didn't use the word writable string in java is called text so other than that for any data type like even null also we have null writable here okay so boolean boolean writable so only for string in map reduce it is text now you may get a question so in map reduce code only we will use writable data types no it is not like that so in map reduce you can use both java data type as well as the writable data type so java data type i can even use int in map reduce program but i can also use int writable so you can get some doubts here Gautam you are confusing us why then we are using both when we have writable data type then why should we have to use Java data type okay I will tell you that so why I am telling you all this right so before showing you the code I'm I'm giving a mindset or a comfortable situation for you to understand the code when I open it okay so I'm, I'm just trying to uh, make it out very clear to have your own comfortable space when I show you the MapReduce code okay that's why i'm just trying all this fine so now 
as I told you, you have four phases in MapReduce. So map input, map output, reducer input, reducer output. So whenever you are using the key value pair format of the data, and that time only you have to use the writable data type. Other than that, within your mapper and reducer logic, if you want to do some kind of a Java, plain Java operation, you can do go with uh, Java data type. For example, you have to do a, a array of string or you have to make a split by, you can use all normal data types. You want to do an integer parse and everything you can do with normal Java. When it comes to key value pair, you are passing the data to a key value pair or you are receiving it in the reducer side as a key value pair, that time only you have to use a writable data type. Okay. So now with all these information that you have in the mind, now let's get into the code so that you will understand better. So before getting into the code, one last thing I want to tell you is skeleton of MapReduce code. Skeleton of MapReduce code. So you will be having one main class. Uh, imagine ABC and then you will be having two nested class one for mapper okay so one for reducer and finally you will be having public static void main which is the main uh, main for your code so you have one, two nested class one for mapper and reducer and main method we call it as a driver code okay main we call it as a driver so finally you have the skeleton okay now the end is over. Let's get into the practical. So I have this Eclipse here and here I have uh, uh, the program for you and uh, how to create a program in Eclipse and how to execute also I will show you in the same video. First I will explain this code for you. Let me increase the font size. So now you can see let me right click here and do uh, folding collapse all. So now you can see the skeleton. I, I told you about the skeleton of the code, right? So you have one main class and then you have uh, uh, two nested class, one for mapper, one for reducer, and then you have the main. Now let me just expand you the mapper class. Okay, so if you see here, public static class sales map extends mapper. So I'm just extending, I'm doing a normal Java inheritance and then I'm extending the mapper and I'm doing, I'm just, uh, I'm just passing the expect data types for my input key and output key. Let me go back to this diagram which I showed you. Now can you tell me since we have seen the uh, data type right in writable I told you the difference between Java and uh, MapReduce data type. So can you uh, tell me like what data type I can use for K1 here? So you may you may get in your mind intritable, right? Yeah, you can use intritable since it is an offset. We don't know. Even for 10th record also, maybe if the column number of columns is so high, your int range can exceed. So whenever you use text input and text output format, it is better to use long writable for keys. Okay, but for intritable, in my case, it works because the volume, the, the length of the column is very small. So K1 is long writable and for V, it is string, right? And that means Java string means in MapReduce it is text. And K2 it is text. V2 is intritable. And K3 is text. V3 is intritable. And as I told you, list don't get confused. Sometimes people used to tell me list of intritable. No, list part will be taken care by the MapReduce framework. You just mention it as writable, intritable. And finally, K4 is text. V4 is intritable. Okay. Let me go back to the code. You can see here mapper input is long writable. Mapper output uh, is, sorry, mapper input key is long writable. Map input value is text. Mapper output key is text. Mapper output value is int writable. So for mapper input key input value and output key output value type we have defined. Okay. Now if you open the source code of this mapper, this mapper has a source code. If you open, you will see four method setup, map, run, clean up and these four method has its own unique way of handling the code. See now we have written the code in the mapper method and I have not used to set up map run clean up and all. I used only map I didn't use remaining three methods and what is the use of uh, the, the code what you have written in the map method you can even write it in the setup method but it has a different way of executing that code. See whatever the code that you write in the map method of a mapper class then that code will be get executed for each and every record the row in your block i repeat any code th that you write in the mapper method right map method the code will be get executed for each and every row in the block 
Now imagine I have a certain case where I need to run only once for each block not for each row. Now imagine you have to create a connection in Oracle. You have to open a connection. You are doing a JDBC connectivity. You want to create a connection. So now imagine if you write a code to create a connection and map method and you have 10 records in the block then how many connection will get created? 10 connection right because I told you any logic that you write in the map method will run for each row right you have 10 rows then 10 times just for reading 10 records why should you have to create 10 connections which is costly right so we have a method called setup will be get called before map and whatever you write within setup will be get executed only once okay and the same way cleanup now you have to close the connection now close the connection in the cleanup which will be get executed only once not for every time so any other use case you have like only one time execution you can make use of setup and cleanup and run is a kind of a uh, uh, place where you can write all the driver related stuff but for writing driver related stuff we use main method okay this is the same four methods you can see in the reducer class also I am expanding the reducer class here you can see the same four methods here I have commented right same here also I am using only reduce and similar to map what reduce will run for each key value pair in here for each row okay in map reduce term we say map will run for each key value pair that means each record okay let me first explain you the mapper code so let me expand this now let me go back to the diagram and the query here you have to first select platform and amount then you do the summation and the group so now if you see here public wide map and then I'm, I'm defining the data type which is long writable key text value what is long writable key back to the diagram this key 0, 31, 56 is key and long writable and value is your whole record so we are getting it okay and then context I will tell you what is this context at this line when it comes to line number 38 I will explain see string I am using Java data type I told you right I can use Java data type also so first I am converting the whole value to string because I have to mention that I am using a delimiter in my code so I will show you my input file here see here it is comma separated so I have to tell that my data is comma separated and why we are doing this why should I have to do this because see if it is a normal SQL then you can mention the column name select platform comma amount but in this input there is no columns then how can I fetch it so we are creating a column by creating an array here you can see here string array of element equal to line that is we converted it to string and we stored it as variable as line split by comma now what will be the output of this line you know it will be like this so element element of 0 array starts from 0 element of 0 will be 1 and then element of 1 will be your name that means for each and every input you are creating a column as this column name element 0 is serial number element 1 is the platform element 2 is mobile element 3 is amount so now you created a column name by using Java right so now I'm I'm fetching the column so which element I have to fetch here element of 1 and then element of 3 right so element of 1 is element of 1 is platform element of 3 is amount we need to select only these two column right so now you can see I'm using text which is map reduce data type so now I'm defining element of 1 to text I, I selected so when when this line execute it will get uh, platform Amazon it will get Amazon from the first record now next I have to fetch which uh, column element of 3 so element of 3 is actually an integer column right it's actually an integer column but what we did in line number 33 we converted it to string okay so now we converted it to string because I have to create a column names so I created the column name now what I have to do I have to convert this element of 3 back to integer and I'm using a normal Java data type and the syntax to convert and string to integer integer dot percent now I converted element of 3 when it comes to this line the, the casting will happen that is from string to integer it got converted element of 3 is converted now I am passing this element of 3 that is i which is converted right the variable is i I am passing it to int writable so in text I am passing element of 1 
sorry element of one yes element of one and then I'm okay here um, my mistake okay here my mistake it is not name it is actually Amazon okay I'm sorry so element of one is text so this part ele select element of one and then comma we are selecting element of three so when this line executes it fetch element of three which is your amount right now context dot write means it you are you are writing the output to mapper local file system right that is what context do so context dot write is nothing but it should be always key value pair so tx is what tx is your element of one which is amazon comma what is value which is 2000 so which is k2 v2 you can see here map output k2 v2 amazon 2000 that's it so now this map code whatever you have written will run for each row in your block see are you having any for loop or while loop here no because iteration as i told you mapper will take care okay now what is next expand the reducer side now when it comes to reducer after shuffle so shuffle and all by the time will be happened so when it comes to uh, reducer it comes like this this way so this will be your input when it comes to reducer for example I'll take one record yes so when it comes to reducer this will be the input so now what we are doing in the reducer side I'm getting text key and iterable of iterable. that means the value I'm going to iterate so I'm using this iterable interface so I'm declaring int sum equal to 0 and I'm running in for each loop this is a for each loop I'm iterating the list now you can ask me why you are using for each loop see I'm using this for each loop not to iterate the records this is to iterate the list only okay so I'm just iterating the list that means sum equal to 0 and then 0 plus 2000 is 2000 and 2000 plus 1000 is 3000 and then 1000 plus 3000 plus 3000 totally 6000 so you will be getting because we are using sum plus equal to val dot get so this for each loop will execute for three times and then again sum will be zero for the next key value pair okay and here also we have this context dot right i am printing the key as is i am not doing anything with the key and in writable of sum i am getting the sum so your final output will be this k v4 is k4 v4 will be your final output in hdfs so i will show you how to create a project setup and how to run this code and get the output okay that is our next goal so before that i want to show you driver code that that is very important right in driver there is nothing uh, with respect to logical thing other uh, driver code is like filling the blank like feeding information like where is your job tracker where is your name node see I'm giving all the name node information and job tracker information and then I'm giving a, a title for my code so you can give any title so I'm giving sales sales data okay you give title so this title you can see in the job tracker web UI okay in Hadoop 2 it is resource manager web UI okay now let's come down you can see set jar by class and I'm giving sales info dot class why sales info is this Java file so why I'm setting this because you have to convert this code as a jar file right so we are giving this jar by class and you can see here what is your mapper and uh, mapper output key mapper output value data types what you are using you have to give give that here so I am giving so what is your mapper output key is text what is your mapper output value which is in writable and the same way you have to say for reducer so but here you can see I am not using the word reducer because when you use map keyword as specifying it for mapper and without map keyword means it will consider for reducer okay and then you have to set your mapper class reducer class if you miss to set these two then it will run the default mapper and reducer it won't consider your classes so you have to mention and set num reducer task okay so in the beginning of the diagram video right I told you the reducer task will be increased and decreased that is purely the developer choice based on the requirement I told you right see here only you have to change okay so you can remove this and you can put two and then your input and output format and then what what format you are using we are using text input and text output and finally your input path and output path on the runtime I'm going to give this is I'm passing it as an argument this is from HDFS and output also to HDFS and finally job dot wait for completion is true and that means once you trigger this job in the terminal it will print some extra logs for our 
verification so till the log get generates the job will wait for completion okay so that's why we are giving true if you give false here you will not get the logs in the terminal in the command prompt but you anyway you can see the log in web ui job tracker and on ui you can check but i'm telling you fine so this is what a, a typical map produce program will be so this is again for your understanding only so you don't want to be much into this because we are not using map produce but anyway i'll tell you how to execute this uh, in in hadoop and how to see the result in the resource manager web ui and all i will tell you okay now let me explain you the version 2 architecture of MapReduce. Okay, that is very interesting, but this is important. This is a this is the yawn architecture. I wanted you to know. Okay, let me open a new whiteboard. So this is the yawn architecture of MapReduce because yawn is very important to know. So this is yet another resource negotiator. Yawn full form is yet another resource negotiator. So on top of HDFS we had MapReduce in version 1. So now they removed this MapReduce in version 2 and on top of HDFS they created a layer called Yawn. On top of Yawn you can have MapReduce, you can have Spark, you can have HBase, you can have Strom etc. So Yawn created a common execution model Okay, Yawn is a cluster manager. It, it turned as a cluster manager and Yawn has a common execution module for any of the tech stack that you run on top of Yawn. So Spark, when it comes to Yawn, the architecture of execution is same. When, when it comes to MapReduce, Yawn, when the MapReduce runs on top of Yawn, then the execution is same. Okay, when Storm comes to Yawn, it has a common execution model. But without Yawn, all these technology can be executed separately also. That is very important. Okay, but in Hadoop 2, MapReduce will always run with Yon, but Spark you can run without on with Yon, two types, Strom also, HBase also, so Flink also, with Yon, without Yon, you can do. Okay, so now we understood like where exactly this Yon comes into picture and Yon main used to create, it's a cluster manager that gives a common execution model for all these tech stack. So this Yon, after entering Yon, the job tracker, task tracker, uh, daemon names has been changed to job tracker to resource manager task tracker to node manager and this daemon is not only for MapReduce this daemon only th this daemon is also for Spark also for Strom and any other technology that runs on Yarn so people always will get confused this resource manager and node manager is only for MapReduce no it is for Spark it is for or any technology that runs on Yarn okay now let's discuss how this resource manager and node manager thing happens so you remember uh, we discussed about the diagram like user submits the jar that goes to job tracker same diagram i'm going to tell with this resource manager and node manager okay so let me just erase this or let me open a new window just give me a second so now the drawback of version 1 architecture of MapReduce, right, resource pressure. So that is a single job tracker. So as I uh, just recap the diagram again, so job tracker and job tracker submits the task and starts mapper and reducer, right, mapper and then reducer. So one job tracker has to take care of all the requests. So one user sending one. Now next user also sending the same request. Now again job tracker has to do everything and for each and every job the job tracker has to take care of doing the cluster manager, resource allocation, scheduling, execution and so on. So right for any request comes job tracker has to take care of everything. So job tracker isn't under pressure and in some time job tracker will run out of some memory issue or something will happen to the job tracker. So in the version 2 architecture they implemented this resource manager and node manager and in ha still Hadoop version 1 job tracker we have only one if job tracker goes everything is gone from Hadoop 2 onwards they have implemented two more than one resource manager that is active and passive so even though the active resource manager is dead passive resource manager will continue your job okay not only map reduce job hive job peak job spark job and everything from hadoop 2 same way in hdfs also we have two name nodes from hadoop 2 okay so now imagine that the user sends a request okay so when it comes jar request so it comes to resource manager it comes to resource manager also we call it as a application manager application manager 
okay so this application manager consists of resource manager plus scheduler okay i will remove resource manager from here so this particular process we call it as an application manager okay in short form they used to call it as asm so after submitting the jar so it comes to here so this resource manager and the scheduler combinedly works and it will start a new manager okay I'm, I'm going to a layman example okay this is not a technical example it goes to an assistant manager it creates an assistant manager for this particular jar okay this is a sales jar okay so what this application assistant manager will do right after receiving the request this assistant manager will run the map task in the respective data node and respective data node which has that block okay now this assistant manager is running the task now assistant manager will be taken care of receiving the heartbeats from this mapper node and from this mapper node and assistant manager have to start the reducer in the new node okay now once the job was successful now this assistant manager will send the final heartbeat to resource manager saying that job is success now the resource manager has less pressure now you can ask me what about there is one more uh, marketing data jar okay there is another jar that submitted by a different user so that comes to resource manager now this resource manager will not disturb this assistant manager it won't disturb this guy instead this resource manager will launch a new assistant manager and this assistant manager will do the map task reducer task and 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 then like finally it sends a heartbeat to the resource manager and now what happened if one map task get fails this we already know now this assistant manager will reassign the task to the, the, another replica now in the same way what happened if the assistant manager itself gone now resource manager will create a new assistant manager again for the marketing jar now that means resource manager start a, a new assistant manager for every jar that gets submitted and we call this as technically application master okay application master so this is a yarn architecture and this is how your spark works and this is how your map produce works and everything so for every job that request comes to the resource manager resource manager will start a new application master and this application master is the responsible for that particular jar get complete spark jar or hive job or pig job or map produce whatever it is that application master is responsible i'll show you one more diagram okay so if you see this is the uh, a very uh, uh, diagram which i want to show you how the resource manager after receiving the job request so after the user sends the job request that is request i have marked it as one it goes to asm which is application manager and then application manager and the scheduler and combinedly they will create a new application master in one of the slave node okay this three are slave node so slave node data node and node manager so in in hadoop 2 it is not task tracker it is node manager so it launches the new application master which is the assistant manager right so in one slave node and this assistant manager will take care of running the mapper and reducer and receiving the heartbeats and all those stuff so finally the application man uh, master which is the assistant manager sends the heartbeat to the resource manager saying that everything is fine now resource manager sends the successful notification to the user so now second user sends an another request means a new assistant manager that is application master will be get created so asm means application manager am means application master these two are not demon this is a service that runs within the process this is what the yarn architecture diagram the flow how the execution happens so this is not only for map reduce this is for spark this is for hive anything that you run on top of yarn this is how it works so uh, now you can ask me then where exactly spark architecture will come so spark has its own architecture and you said when spark runs on yarn so this has a common the same resource manager node manager only comes then spark architecture where it comes that comes in the task level here here so when spark also creates a task right so this task level the spark architectures will come but overall the high level of allocating the job executing the process getting the acknowledgement that is what the yarn will do with the help of resource manager and node manager that is the yarn architecture with asm and all am so even strom has its own architecture that comes in the task level okay so this is what yarn architecture of hadoop 2 and uh, we have this execution I, i'll show you how to run the map produce program
So now let me show you how to do a uh, MapReduce setup in Eclipse IDE. Okay, so let's first create a project. So file uh, new Java project. So let me name it as MapReduce. Okay, finish. So this will just create a normal Java project. So after creating this project, what I will do, I will just uh, copy paste the MapReduce program. Uh, so I already have my code. So I have my code here. In example, this is another project, but I'll just copy my code from here. Okay, so sales info Java. Let me copy the code and then I will paste it inside SRC folder under MapReduce project, which we have just created now. Right. So now you can expand here. You can see some errors. Okay. So this errors, like I'll, sh I'll just show you the code first. So if I expand the import statement, you can see uh, there is first three import statement, which is Java import. So there is no error because by default, we created a Java project. Any Java related code that you add here, you will not get any error. But if you see, I'm getting this org Apache Hadoop, all these are Hadoop imports. So now Eclipse doesn't know the dependent library information of Hadoop. So what you have to do is you have to inform your Eclipse where the libraries of Hadoop present. So or what you can do, you can copy all the libraries, the jar files from Hadoop installation directory and you can paste it here inside your project folder. So in real time, people will use some build tools. You can Google it. What is build tool? Build tools like Maven, Gradle, uh, SBT. So these are some build tools. In, if you use build tools, then the, the build tool will take care of getting the dependency for the respective syntax and the code what is required. Okay, you can just search for a build tool and what is Maven and how to configure MapReduce program or Spark program in Maven. You can Google it. So that is a, a separate big topic. So I don't want to get into that for now. So let's just do this manually. I'll bring the jar and then I'll place it in my project folder so that the errors will be get resolved. Okay, first we have to do that. So this is not only for MapReduce. Even you create a Spark Java project or even any other uh, project with respect to the technology, you have to bring the dependency also the libraries also or you can use the build tools okay fine so now uh, what i'll do i'll just uh, so here this hadoop folder 2.9.1 i have just extracted it okay so this is windows but we are not going to execute the hadoop in windows or i'm not going to execute the code in windows so i'm just doing my development only in the eclipse and that to installed in windows after creating the jar file of my code i will move this code to my linux server in which hadoop is running Okay, this is how in the real time also we'll do. It's Spark or MapReduce, anything, right? Our office laptop will be Windows and you have to develop your code on Windows and then you will be moving your jar file to Linux server, right? So the same way. So, but we need this libraries, right? So I've just extract, downloaded and extracted the Hadoop. So just open this folder. You will see uh, share, open this folder share and then Hadoop and you will see some folders here. So first open this common folder and then you just open this lib folder and copy all the jar files. Okay, so copy all the jar files. Just go to Eclipse, right click your project and create a folder, new folder. And you have to name it as library, LIB. Enter. So this will create a lib folder. So now you have to copy all these jar files inside common folder and paste it in the Eclipse lib folder. Okay, this is first step. So let me do now copy and then go to your Eclipse and in the lib folder you have to paste. Fine. So next in outside uh, like inside common folder outside the lib folder you will see a couple of jars here right. So copy these jars also just copy these jars as well and in lib folder you can paste it. Yeah, okay. So now next folder HDFS. So go to HDFS and you will see lib folder again copy all the jar file and come back lib folder just paste it so some uh, jars will be already there but that is fine but we don't know which jar to uh, get specifically right so just overwrite the remaining jar files whatever it is already exists just you can overwrite so for this case only like people use this build tools maven build tools and any other build tools which it will take care of downloading the respective jar what is required for that particular code and then outside the lib folder and inside hdfs you will see some more jar files just copy these as well and then paste it here in the lib folder yes to all once again and then next 
map reduce okay this is next so lib folder again copy all the jar files paste it here and then again go to map reduce folder you will see some more jars available outside the lib folder copy that as well and then paste it here okay so next yawn okay so in yawn again you will see lib folder copy this and go back to the lib folder paste it and then inside yarn folder outside lib folder you will see again some additional jars copy this as well okay just let's wait for this to complete yeah okay so now paste okay now we just uh, copied all the jars whatever it is required you can follow the order what i have explained and showed in the video now the jars has been placed but still the Eclipse has to know that the jar files what I have added in the lib folder needed to need to consider. So the Eclipse need to consider it. So for that what we have to do. So you have to build a path between Eclipse and your lib folder and we call it as Java build path. That means you have to add all these jar files which you have placed in the lib folder in the Java build path. Okay, that is the next step. Just right click map reduce and go to properties and you will see there is an option Java build path. Click this. And then you will see add jars click this and expand your project our project is map ready and you will see a lib folder right just expand it and select all these jar fill so just shift down arrow select the first jar and then shift down arrow so why I'm, I'm, I'm going one by one right so uh, when you copy some jar file th there will be some uh, text files or uh, tar files in the lib folder so just I'm checking it so if the if you have some other files or uh, other than jar files then you will not have a successful build okay just go through once you just make sure you copied only the jar file not any other tar file or text files or XML files okay there is no other files other than dot jar click OK yes now finally you click ok here so now the errors will be get disappeared you can see here so the build path is setting up so once this is done so the eclipse will come to know all the hadoop libraries have been added to the build path so the errors will be get resolved automatically so if there is any others if you see still then you are missing some jars okay now you can see all the errors have been gone so these are some warnings they are like unused imports so warnings are always fine so but there is no error right so what is the next step we have to convert this code as a jar file right so right click your map reduce project there is an option export and then choose expand java folder choose jar file and then next okay so here downloads so let me change this to documents documents slash the jar name i'm giving it as my underscore jar dot jar okay one more next and in this window you don't want to do anything one more next and browse your main class just click browse okay so here this is your main class right sales info finish so already in documents I have a jar file I'm just overriding it yes you can override okay so the jar export is completed with some warnings because we had some warnings in the code right but that is fine so let me show you in my documents folder okay so you can see here my underscore jar dot jar okay this is a jar file extension right so now the jar has been exported now you have to move this jar to your cluster with your Hadoop node your Linux node right so now uh, my my mission is a remote mission so what I'll do it's an it's an AWS mission so I'll just connect to my WinSAP. so I'm using WinSAP tool the WinSAP tool will use to move the file it's secure copy right so from your local to your remote mission okay so I have to make a new connection now so new connection my IP has been changed so new connection and the username is Ubuntu and then this is a I have to use a key file to connect it's not a password so it's an AWS mission so it is a key file but it is fine if, if you are your mission has password you can give a password and you can connect so I have a private key private key is what a password in my AWS mission so okay and then login 
okay it is connecting to my remote machine or what you can do like you have a Linux machine separately then you can copy your jar file in a pen drive and you can connect to that Linux machine if that has an access in your local machine I'm telling okay so now uh, I've connected now my jar file is here the left hand side is a local your local machine and you just do a drag drop to right hand side so right hand side machine is my uh, I have to overwrite okay right hand side machine is my Hadoop cluster node okay I'm just copying my jar file so once the copy is completed we can trigger the code so before triggering the code uh, you need that input file right so this input file in Eclipse we used is the 10 records input file right so the seven records so this needs to be in HDFS because for MapReduce input is from HDFS only right so I have already uploaded this to HDFS I will just show you my HDFS here so where I have already uploaded the input file so click browse file system or you can do an ls command so this is my input.txt it is there so or what I will do I'll just show in my remote machine itself so JPS Hadoop demons are running so Hadoop so bin slash Hadoop DFS hyphen ls slash space slash so you will see input.txt so let me do a cat so remove ls all these are like HDFS commands it's not your local Linux command okay so I'll ju I'm just doing a cat to show you that seven records is there so if you want to upload so let me show you this file in my local also okay I'm just giving just ls hyphen lstr so you can see my input file is here so how to upload this change your directory to Hadoop and then bin slash Hadoop space DFS hyphen put command to upload your local file to HDFS now slash home you have to give the complete path slash home slash ubuntu slash input and then space slash input underscore hdfs something some name so this input underscore hdfs dot txt is going to be your file name after uploading it to hdfs but this step i have already done i have uploaded my file input as input dot txt in hdfs it is there input file is already there so now my jar copy to the linux system is also completed you can see in win recipe it's it's moved completely so now let me clear my screen so this is my linux server so come out from hadoop and i will show you my jar file okay you can see this is my jar file okay latest it is the latest one so now change your directory back to Hadoop 2.9.2 now I'll show you the command to trigger, trigger the map reduce job bin slash Hadoop space jar so for any HDFS commands it, it will start with bin slash Hadoop DFS but for map reduce it is bin slash Hadoop jar and then your jar name okay so the path is home slash ubuntu slash my jar and then space slash your input for your map release job what is your input that input dot txt in hdfs not from local so input dot txt space slash you have to give an output directory for storing the map reduce output right the reducer output right so you have to give some name so what i'll do i'll give mr underscore out underscore one so this is this will be a folder this is not a text file this will be a folder and within this folder your output text file will be there I'll show you enter so now this will trigger a map reduce job so you can see the resource manager is connected to the resource manager so now the job is started with the job ID you can see the job ID here now I can show you the job tracker web UI or in Hadoop 1 we call it as job tracker web UI in Hadoop 2 you can call it as resource manager web UI or yawn web UI so here is my resource manager web UI where you can see all your running map reduce job okay map reduce job got completed okay let me go back to my terminal yes it is completed so the job is completed successfully so you can see the job information here so you can click this and you will see all the information whatever like how long it has been taken and all those stuff you can able to see here okay I'll just click this okay now you can see it is map ready job it is succeeded it took 16 seconds to complete and if you click this log file you will see the log file information okay let me see the output now okay just refresh so our output directory name is mr underscore out underscore one it got created okay let me go to terminal and let's do hadoop bin slash hadoop fs space ls slash mr underscore out underscore one okay now 
do an ls on top of this directory your map ready's output directory so you will be seeing two files one is underscore success meaning the job is successful and then next one is actually your output file so part f and r 0 0 0 0 part full form partition r full form reducer because this is reducer output if it is a mapper only output means then you will see part f and m 0 0 0 okay so now let's do a cat on this file okay so bin slash hadoop dfs space iphone cat enter so now you can able to see the data so amazon the total amount ebay the total amount flipkart the total amount so this is what our expected answer as well right so now we got the output so now the file uh, like whenever you run a MapReduce program the output should be a directory and within the directory you will see the part f and r 00 file so generally we can't able to change uh, means you can able to change the file name from part f and r to something else but no one will do it so some people will say it is not possible so it is possible but no one will do it okay so you can you can able to keep the directory name only on your wish but internally the file structure for your map reduce output will be part f and r 0 0 0 so if you have two reducer means then in the same directory you will be seeing part f and r 0 0 0 0 then part f and r 0 0 0 1 okay so i in the code i told you how to change the reducer or how to increase or decrease the reducer right so this is how the map reduce program works and we have seen the end to end part of executing the code till executing the code and I, I showed you the resource manager web ui as well fine and i want to show you some of the configuration which i told you before right so map red iphone default.xml so here i want to show you something so i told you like each task tracker or the node manager by default launches two tasks within a node it will launch two tasks i told you right if it is needed it will use both the task or the task tracker has only one task to process means it will still launch two tasks in parallel but only one will be uh, used and another one will be idle but by default it launches two so this is like within node parallelism we discussed before right so this is what that property is map reduce dot job dot map is two so you can increase so whenever the task tracker starts the map job by default whether the given number of block on that particular node is one block or two block or three block it launches two by default okay so you can increase this so that you can achieve more number of parallelism in a in each of the node okay so i just wanted to show you this so i've just showed fine so now we can move on to the next topic which is input split okay so just give me a second i will open a new notebook okay input split this is very important topic in general okay so first of all what is blocks in hdfs it's a physical unit of your file right so your big file is getting into small chunks called as blocks and why we need the concept of blocks so that when in in, in your hard disk when the data has been splitted into blocks means your read and write will be faster and that's why even in windows and linux also you have the concept of blocks right so now in hdfs my one block size equal to 64 mb okay imagine so now you have uh, two blocks b0 and b1 okay now here map task so by default number of mapper is based on what i told you number of blocks is equal to number of map so if you have two blocks then you will be having two mappers and also i told this is default right that means you can able to change this and I said I will tell you this concept later and that concept name is input split that is number of blocks blocks equal to or it can be not equal to number of map task okay this is what the actual statement is okay so still so many people used to think that number of block equal to number of map always but it is not the case okay so now imagine first let's let's go with step by step let's go step by step so here you have two blocks so two mapper so mapper one mapper two so here let's go as block one block two so two mappers now so where the split comes into picture so between block and map task your split comes into picture so the split will be running inside your map reduce framework before map gets start the split concept will work so the split is logical logical block is physical it is physical 
So block is physical and split is logical unit of block. Here this is block is a physical one. It's like physical two blocks, but here it is logical. So that means I'll, I'll explain you more. So now imagine, so you take a block. So imagine I have a data one A, B, two comma C, D, three comma E, F, four comma G, H, five comma I, J. Imagine I'm having uh, five records and this five records total size of this file is 128 MB just for example. Okay. Now how your blocks will get split? So what people used to think, okay, up to this one block and the next two records is another block. So this is 64 MB and this is 64 MB. Okay, this is how the block will split, but actually this won't split like this. So it's, it's, it's not always true, right? So a block will not be get exactly split at the last two column. It is not mandatory, right? So now imagine 1 A, B, 2 C, D, 3 E, F, 4 G, H, 5 I, J. Okay, now imagine your first 64 MB get completed here and your next 64 MB can get complete here also, right? So this is block 1, this is block 2. So this block 2 is in some 7th node and this block 1 is in 3rd node. Now task tracker has to consider these two blocks and it has to run the map reduce job. So this is how your blocks will be, right? It's not always the first case. Your block can be get splitted unevenly irrespective to the data, right? So now imagine a map task is trying to read the first block. The first mapper is trying to read the first block. So it will read 1A, 1, A, B, 2, C, D, 3. It will read, first mapper will read only till 3. Now imagine I have two nodes. This node is third node and, and a task tracker is running. I'll use the word task tracker, which is very comfortable for me. So, but otherwise called this is node manager in Hadoop 2. Okay, but I'll just go with task tracker. So task tracker. So this is seventh node. So here one map task will be running and here one map task will be running. Okay, but here in seventh node, we have this B2 block in first node, we have B1. That is in the third node, we have B1. Here I have the data one comma A comma B. 2 comma C comma D and till, till 3 only I'm having. So if you take B2, E comma F, it starts from E comma F. There is one column of the data is missing on this particular row. Next 4 comma G H, 5 comma I J. Now here, this particular mapper, when it comes to read the third record, you may get some index out of bound exception or array out of bound exception, but you won't get such exception because the task tracker has the intelligence to consider that the balance record of this particular row is in a different node. And who will take care of that is the split. Split. So split is logical, like one block size is 64 MB means one split size is also 64 MB. S P L I T is 64 MB. So this is physical, this is logical. So logically, the split will connect these two. So now that means this mapper will read 3 E and F from this particular node and it will read only this record, not the balance. But this is logical. Okay, physically the record E and F is not moving from B2 to B1. It is in the seventh node only. So this seventh node mapper will start processing the record from 4 and 5 only. Okay, so this task tracker, so we call this as lookup. Okay, we call this as lookup. So this task tracker is doing a lookup on this particular block to read E and F. So, but nothing is moved from that block to this block. Okay, it is all logical. Now, imagine, so one block is 64, which is physical and split is logical grouping of the blocks. And that is also 64 MB by default and then mapper. So that means one block is equal to one split is equal to one mapper. Okay, now see block may or may not be equal to split, but split is always equal to mapper. Okay, so I repeat block may or may not be equal to split, but split is always equal to mapper. So that means you have two blocks means by default it is two split, so two mapper. So, but you have two blocks but the split can be changed to one. So you will be having one mapper only. So to increase and decrease the mapper count irrespective to the block count, you have to adjust the split. So that is why I've explained all this to you. 
okay i repeat to increase or decrease the mapper count irrespective to the block count you have to adjust the size of split okay i will just show you the property so the property that you have to set in your map reduce driver program is map red dot max dot split dot size so this is what the property with this you can achieve it so in the code you can actually add this in your driver program i will show you where you have to add so in the code in the driver yeah so here you can add so you can add in the driver you can add one more conf dot set and then you can add map red dot split max dot split dot size and you can give the split size okay what is the split size and what size i have to give okay for that i'll, I'll go with the new window one more time just give me a second i'll open a new notebook see this input split is very important even in between you lost something or you couldn't get it please rewind the video and watch it one more time carefully okay so now i'll tell you how to change the split size and what actually we are trying to achieve so now imagine i have blocks i have four blocks each with 64 mb b1 b2 b3 b4 okay now you have mapper here and you have the split okay input split okay is input split now imagine uh, you have to you have four blocks so by default how many mappers you will get four mappers right now imagine just a scenario i'm telling now the admin your hadoop admin says that you cannot run four task and all because we have less resource so that try to reduce your mapper task so this is what he is telling to you but you are saying like number of blocks equal to number of mappers. So four blocks means four mappers. But now our admin is asking me to use two mappers instead of four. So to do that, we have to change the split size. And that split size property is what I told you in the map reduce. In conf.set, you can change this. So now here it is 64. By default, input split will be also 64. But you are changing this to a number that is 128 MB. So when you do this, what happened? So two physical block logically will be get grouped into one split. Okay, so B0, B2 will be one split. And again, B3, B4 will be logically grouped into one split. So this is second split. So you have two 128 splits and four 64 MB blocks. So now I told you the rule, right? So blocks may not may or may not equal to split but split is always equal to mapper so how many splits you have two splits so how many mappers you will get it is two mappers right so here what we have done we have increased the split size to reduce the number of map task so i repeat we increased the split size to reduce the mapper task always the rule is when you want to reduce the mapper tasks you have to increase the split size. Now reverse. What I will do? The same 32 MB now split sizes. Now admin says, now admin says like you have, so 32 MB split. You have more resource. You want to, you have only four, four mapper task you need. You can have eight mapper task. Now admin says you can use eight mapper task, but I have four blocks only. B1, B2, B3, B4. Now I've changed my split size to 32 MB that means one physical block will have two logical splits so split one split two and so and so split three split four split five split six and finally split seven split eight so you have eight splits that means how many mappers you will get block equal to or not equal to split but split is always equal to mapper right so m1 m2 m3 m4 m5 m6 m7 m8 so for four blocks you will have eight mappers so after executing this you can able to see in the job tracker that is the resource manager ui also total number of map tasks you can able to see so for that what all you need to do is you have to add this property conf dot set map red dot max dot split dot size comma 32 mb you have to give in bytes okay comma here you can so I'll, let me add it so conf dot set map reduce map reduce dot max dot split dot 
size comma double quotes here you have to sorry just a second here you have to give uh, 32 MB in bytes or 64 MB in bytes 128 MB in bytes you can do a MB to bytes conversion and you can add it here so now after changing the after entering the value here you can jar you can make a jar of this particular code and you can run it so that you can able to show them the difference and make sure like uh, you have you are giving your input size size the file size the input file for this map produce program is 128 mb or more than 64 mb then only you can able to see the difference because in our current example the total number of block itself is one and that block again it is less than 0.2 kb okay so you cannot show the example of split size so just create a file size like at least 128 mb complete file size should be 128 mb so that you can increase and decrease the split size and you can able to show the difference like blocks is two but mapper task is four you can able to show them fine so one last thing i want to show you is speculative execution okay so let me uh, just remove this so let me erase all this so speculative execution uh, I, I, initially i said i will tell you this topic later right so this is the last topic of this particular video for map reduce so speculative execution so this is very common even in spark and map reduce we have the concept of speculative execution and even in some interviews people are asking this now imagine uh, you have uh, the resource manager which is uh, launching the task okay let me go with job tracker again job tracker task tracker to make the concept very simple so job tracker is launching task tracker okay so it means it is assigning the task to the task tracker and task tracker launches the map task now these two mapper are running at the same time but imagine for some reason this particular map task which is running on the node one is taking time it got stuck it got stuck but the second mapper is running fine and it got completed also but it got stuck so this first mapper got stuck it is not failed or it is not like any issue but it got stuck due to some reason of maybe the ram issue or hardware issue something but there is no code issue there is nothing with the uh, respect to the code maybe the data got skewed or 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 you have some issues with the infrastructure so this map job got stuck so here it is running for b0 block here it is running for b1 block now in that case what the job tracker will do it will search for the next copy of b0 which is in a different node okay so which is in a different node task tracker imagine this is first node second node imagine this is third node so the same task which is running on b0 of the first copy will be reassigned means it, it one more task on the b0 the same map task will be assigned so the same map task will be assigned and this mapper will start running so very important here so this first mapper job on b0 is also running but got stuck due to the first job the map task got stuck it is try to launch the same map task on the second copy of b0 and here it is running that means this is duplicate task these two tasks are duplicates this is duplicates so now now two task is running one is stuck and that is why job tracker started a new task okay now which task get completes will be considered by job tracker but the very important thing in the speculative execution duplicate task will be get launched but the the, the stuck task will not be get killed so this is not get killed and all it is also running and the new task which has been launched also running imagine after starting the new task this get completed immediately means this will be killed the first task which got stuck right it will be killed or in reverse now here the new task which is launched after launched the new duplicate task on the second copy of b0 after launching the first uh, task which is running got completed means this will be killed this will be considered so this is what called speculative execution that means whenever the task got stuck it will start a same task in the second replica but both the tasks will be running the duplicate task but it will consider any one output which get completes first it will consider so since it is running duplicate task it won't kill each of the task any one of the task it won't kill the job tracker will not kill it okay it will wait if anything any one of the task of the duplicates get complete it will consider that this is what spe speculative execution is 
Okay, so this is there in Spark also. This is there in MapReduce also. And people are asking this in interview. You have to tell them. And there is an option to turn off the speculative execution because due to some reason, if the job got stuck, imagine some 2000 tasks got stuck means it will again start 2000 duplicate tasks. So parallelly to uh, task duplicates are running for the 2000 instead of 2000 tasks now 4000 tasks is running out of which 2000 is duplicate so sometime you will have some in problems with the resource when you have more number of duplicate tasks right so in some orgs they will disable the speculative execution but but it's again a debate whether we can enable or disable so this is what speculative execution is <coughs> so that's all with the map reduce so whatever like at this present, you need to know in MapReduce, I've told you everything. And we have some small, small MapReduce topic that is important just to know on theoretical perspective, not into practical because such concepts are again used in Spark as well. So I'll make a separate video for that. Please stay in touch with my playlist. I'll be keep on updating my playlist and you can get all the big data videos in my playlist as well. So thanks for watching. If you really like this video, please do subscribe to my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues. Thank you.